I admit that, like many Americans, I've been guilty of a few cultural faux pas in my time, like giving high fives at a funeral or scratching myself with chopsticks at a restaurant, that sort of thing. But in the woodworking world, especially among the old timers, few things are as offensive as what I am doing right now. Do you see it? Are you fuming over it? Are you ready to head to the comments and call me incompetent or reckless for teaching people it's okay to lay a hand plane on the bench top with its sole facing downward? In fact, all the planes on the wall behind me are sold out. Was I dropped on my head as a child? You see, many woodworkers were taught that a hand plane should always be laid on its side to protect the iron. The idea is that the hard bench top can chip that delicate razor sharp edge. To that, I usually say, if you're worried about the wood on your bench top, how are you gonna plane your project parts? Because a catch on some tough grain or a small knot will be far harder on your edge than setting the tool on a wooden bench top. But wait a minute, you young whippersnapper with your fancy YouTube channel and your stupid face, are you telling me generations of masters are all wrong? Not at all. But the practice of laying a plane on its side may not be as written in stone as you were led to believe. If you look at old books and photos, you'll find that the practice seems to only date back to around the 1930s. That's when many schools began introducing shop classes. So it seems that it was in that setting, rather than the professional shop, that this practice developed. And it wasn't to protect the plane from the wooden bench top, but to protect it from what may be laying on the bench top. In shop classes, you had children who didn't always keep their benches tidy. And they may just plop their plane right down on top of another tool or some other metal object like a nail. It was that metal to metal contact that could harm the cutting edge, not the wood on the bench top itself. Perhaps the best authority I know is hand tool guru Paul Sellers, who learned this firsthand. He was taught to lay his plane on its side in school half a century ago, like a lot of people were. But when he got out of school and he began working with seasoned cabinet makers in actual shops, he found that those old timers were placing their planes on the bench, sole down, where it was ready for action, right next to their work. Now this isn't just a matter of convenience. Every time you lay a plane down, you give it a little bump. If you're working quickly, putting it down, adjusting your work, picking it up, going back to work and so on, you're creating many bumps. If you're laying it on its side, those small shocks can begin to skew the iron causing an uneven cut. But laying it on its sole has no such effect upon the iron, especially on cast iron planes. And since the weight of the toe causes it to contact the bench top first, you aren't dropping the cutting edge on the iron either. Finally, a plane laying on its side is more vulnerable to another tool striking against the cutter or even your hand brushing against it. I am not saying that one way is right and one way is wrong. I'm just saying that like so many things in woodworking and life in general, there is more than one legitimate way to do things. And if somebody is doing something different, ask why and maybe you'll learn something. Of course, another way of doing something like this involves power. I may plane some of my things by hand, but I do the bulk of my milling with machines. And I upgraded those machines, particularly my jointer and planer, to helical cutter heads years ago. And it completely changed how the tools work. They're quieter, dust collection is better, the surfaces are smoother and they're free from lines and tear out, even in really difficult wood. Honestly, it may be the best investment I've made in a long time. But here's the thing. If you're thinking of changing over one of your machines, I highly recommend that you stop putting it off because I have no idea what the prices and especially the wait times are going to be like in the future. There's only a couple of companies that are making high quality versions of these heads and more and more of that stock is going straight to the big machine companies for their new machines. So if you want an aftermarket head for your older machine anytime soon, you should consider pulling the trigger now. And you definitely should do it at mywoodcutters.com. They're a small Canadian business that deals with Bird Shelix and Titan Lux cut heads. These are the best ones out there in my opinion. I got my first head from my woodcutters, I don't even know how many years ago. And since then, I 
put in half a dozen of them in different machines. I trust Stefan and his team because they know their stuff. They can walk you through choosing the right head. They can help you to get measurements if they need to manufacture a head for an odd tool. They can help you with making the actual upgrade in your machine, and they don't disappear if you need their help down the road, something that unfortunately seems common when you buy from another source. I wouldn't consider anywhere else for a substantial purchase like this. If you want to check out what a helical carbide cutter head will cost for your joint or planer, use the link below this video and tell mywoodcutters.com that I sent you. See you next time.